So let's talk about colorectal cancer, CRC. Epidemiology, most patients are over 50. So Lynch, uh, we talked about is uh, less than 50. Wait, let me go back to Lynch syndrome, which was H and PCC syndrome. My bad, H and PCC, colorectal cancer. This is less than 50 years. This guy here is greater than 50 years. This was family history positive. This is only 25% have the family history. Family history positive for CEOs. CEOs being colon, the ovarian, the skin cancer. Okay. Uh, the risk factor for the CRC is, now let's look at these risk factors. Adenomatous polyp, anti-rated polyp. Yeah, both of them. We talked about it already. Familial cancer syndromes, IBD, uh, in which IBD are we uh, talking about? We are talking about being the ulcerative colitis, which has a, uh, and also depends upon how much, how much of the colon has been, has been uh, uh, associated with the UC. So if you have a pan co uh, involvement of the pan colon, like all of the colon that increases the chances of CRC. So the more you involve the colon, the more you involve the colon, the more chance you get of getting the CRC. That is uh, the IBD you see. Tobacco use, a diet of processed meat with low fibers. Now in presentation, you have the rectosigmoid greater than ascending and greater than descending, okay? Most, uh, let me change color. Most are asymptomatic. Right side, like C color ascending, are associated with occult bleeding. So right side is occult bleeding. While on the other hand, left side, if a rectosigmoid, associated with hematochesia and obstruction, narrowing the lumen. When you narrow the lumen, you have a decreased tool caliber. Pencil stools. Ascending, you have, and yeah, uh, in the ascending, you have the exophil exophytic mass, which leads to so. Uh, in the this is the ascending colon is really big. So even if you have this mass, it's not uh, it's not going to decrease any stool caliber or anything, but it's going to bleed. It's going to give you iron deficiency anemia and weight loss. Descending, on the other hand, let's make this guy descending. You have infiltrating mass. The mass infiltrates, which causes sort of a partial obstruction and colicky pan and hemorrhagia. But can present with as bovis, ga uh, galoliticus, as bovis galoliticus, bacteremia endocarditis so if you have somebody who comes up with endocarditis and you check the bug and the bacteremia that's the s bovis then you are going to be thinking about crc you should know that this is crc now and just do the colonoscopy and it's gonna be there or an episodic diverticulitis Okay, so S. bovis is associated with the endocarditis and CRC with endocarditis leading to endocarditis. Okay. How do you diagnose this? Diagnosing iron deficiency anemia because of the blood loss in males, especially in 50 years old, and postmenopausal females uh, raises suspe uh, suspicion. Okay, so age with iron deficiency anemia. It raises the suspicion, but you got to screen it. The screening goes in if you have an average risk, like a normal individual. Uh, you can screen at age 45 with colonoscopy. 
polyp is seen as an aid. This polyp is seen. Alternates include either you can do clonoscopy or you can do flexible sigmatoscopy or fecal occult blood testing, FOBT. Fecal immunochemical testing, FET, or FET fecal DNA or CT clonography. So you can do any of them. This is to the average risk at age 45. But if you have a patient with a first degree relative who has a colon cancer, you, you are going to be screening at age 40 with colonoscopy or 10 years prior to their relative presentation. So patient relative presented at 52 years, you're going to do colonoscopy at 42 years. A normal average individual you're looking at 45. Okay. But if you don't know the when they got it, do it at 40 years. Patients with IBD now, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, screen eight years after the onset. So after the onset of IBD, screen it after eight years. Uh, now you can do some imaging, and in that you will see an apple core lesion seen on the barium anema x-ray. Uh, apple core, look at that apple core. So you have it here, you have that apple core. Apple core, seen right there. Apple core lesion on the barium anema x-ray. CEA tumor markers, they're good for monitoring, recurrence, and should not be used for screening. Very important point, CEA tumor markers they're only good for monitoring recurrence, but not for the screening. Only to see if the if if they're recurring or not. And only to monitor that. Nothing else. But apple core lesion is there. Okay, now let's talk about the molecular pathogenesis of colorectal C or C. What are what is the molecular pathogenesis? We did uh, mention a little bit of this, but uh, let's talk about the whole thing. Chromosomal instability. Chromosomal instability pathway. That's the first thing. And the second is the microsatellite instability pathway. So coming back to it first. First, you have a mutation in the APC causes FAP. Yes. And most sporadic cases of CRC. Yes. Right? It, it commonly on the right side by adenoma carcinoma sequence, uh, AK53 is the mnemonic here. Okay. And the uh, they want you to know the names and the uh, you will be okay. What is APC? APC is the adenomatous polyposis coli gene adenomatous polyposis coli gene that's the APC okay now we had already talked about the microsatellite but let's just quickly go through the mutations or methylation of mismatch repair genes MLH all M's Microsatellite mutation, methylation, mismatch, MLH causes Lynch syndrome and some sporadic CRC by serrated polyp pathway. Overproduction of COX2 has been linked to CRC. So, one thing was loss of tumor suppressor, second thing was increase in COX2 that caused. C or C. So if you were to give NSAIDs or aspirin or NSAIDs, you are chemo preventive. This could be chemo pre preventive. What's the mechanism? NSAIDs or aspirin is going to inhibit your COX2 
and COX-2 has been linked to formation of CRC. So when the, the uh, this is inhibited, you are doing a good job. You're pr chemo preventive. And this could be chemo preventive. So it can work. Okay. And uh, that's all for the GI.